Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, and just as a quick heads up, this is not a budget deck, although I do think it should be fairly easy to find substitutes for those expensive cards. But before that, just a quick reminder to please click like and subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and every single click counts. And today we're going to be talking about Don Andres the Renegade. For one colorless, one blue, one black, and one red, it's a legendary creature, Vampire Pirate 4-3, with each creature you control but don't own gets plus 2 plus 2, has menace and death touch, and is a pirate in addition to its other types. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell you don't own, create two tapped treasure tokens. I feel like I've been looking at commanders that do something similar to this for a while, but there wasn't any given one that really covered enough bases or did enough things, and this kind of does. It's going to work with steel effects, it's going to work with effects where you cast your opponent's things from exile, and when you combine both of those themes together, you have enough cards to make a very strong and cohesive deck. There's obviously also a bit of a pirate sub theme going on because the creatures you steal are going to be pirates. So that's all good and it gives us a lot of angles to build around. So without further ado, let's get started and we're starting off with Admiral Beckett Brass. She's great with all the pirates we're making, particularly since all of those pirates are going to have menace thanks to Don Andres, which means that it's very likely that they connect and we get to steal more stuff and then it just snowballs and snowballs. Agent of Treachery is so good seeing as we're going to have so many cards we've stolen from our opponents, which means that we're often going to be drawing three cards at the end of our end step. Arvinox the Mind Flail is really expensive, but it's a sweet card that allows us to play stuff for as long as they're exiled. So even if this gets removed, you can still play the cards. It should often be a creature in this deck, but that's almost almost the downside because it makes it easier to remove. Next up we're moving on to Brainstealer Demon. Now it's very similar to Arvinox in a way except with this one we actually get to deal damage to the opponent that we're stealing from whenever we play one of their permanents which is fantastic. Breach's Brazen Plunderer is going to allow us to steal more stuff from our opponent's decks whenever we attack with pirates which obviously works great with our commander. Breach's Eager Pillager from the new Ixalan set is really solid here because we're going to be attacking with a ton of pirates which means we should be triggering all three abilities basically every turn. Captain Storm Cosmium Raider is going to work very well with all of the treasure creation we're doing so she's going to be able to buff herself or other pirates we control for big beats. Captivating Prue fits perfectly by being a pirate and also allowing us to dump extra mana into it to steal stuff from our opponents. Deathly Voidwalker is great for a bunch of reasons. First it's going to provide some graveyard hate which is always nice. Then it's also going to be easy to trigger a lot of our deal damage effects seeing as it has shadow and finally we can actually sacrifice it to steal something from our opponents which is going to trigger our command. Dazzling Sphinx is a really fun card that I've always liked and it fits so well in this deck because we're going to get to play instants or sorceries from our opponent's libraries which means we're going to get two treasures from our commander each time this connects. Decadent Dragon does a lot of things that we want in this deck. The adventure side is really good allowing us to play stuff for as long as it's exiled and then the creature side is also great because it's going to make treasure tokens which is something we want as well. Direfully Daredevil is the red version of Snapcaster Mage and we're going to be exiling stuff from our opponent's graveyard which works very well with our commander. Itali Primal Storm is going to do so much work by exiling cards from our opponent's decks. This can provide a huge mana boost seeing as each non-land card we hit can basically give us two treasures. Fallen Shinobi is a really sweet card that we should be able to sneak through with all of the menacing that we're doing and when we do we're going to get to play two cards from the top of our opponent's library which is sweet. Francisco Foul Marauder is really solid because we're going to be dealing a lot of damage with pirates and if we can hit three different players this is going to explore three times per turn cycle which is huge. Gem Cutter Buccaneer is going to give us a lot of treasures with all the pirates we're making, particularly those we're casting from our opponents, and all those treasures get to double up as damage for just one mana, which is great. Issa Glorious Resurrector is more graveyard hate for our opponents that is actually going to put the creatures into play under our control, where they can then benefit from our commander, and they also just sacrifice themselves after they're done attacking, which can often be nice to trigger their death triggers. Gonti Lord of Luxury is a really mean card that also works very well with what our commander is doing. Grenzo Havoc Razor is going to work so well with all of our little creatures that can sneak through for damage and is then going to allow us to cast stuff from our opponent's libraries. Grim Hiling is going to provide us a ton of treasures in this deck which we can then put to good use with our other synergies. Remar Saruman's Footman is one of the best cards in the deck by being unblockable and being able to cast a spell for free from our opponent's library every time it connects thus providing us two treasures every single time it deals combat damage. Cording Brutalord is very solid because we are casting a bunch of cards from exile and this is going to make all of those cards basically have convoked. 
Hostage Taker is pretty sweet because it's a pirate, but we do have a very limited amount of time where we can cast the creature because if this gets removed, we lose the creature that we stole as well. Malcolm Keen Eyed Navigator can give us up to three treasure tokens per attack. Marionette Master is a great way to finish the game with all of the treasure tokens that we're making. Bogan Nasari is a card that I found myself putting in more and more decks. It's basically like Atali, but you don't actually need to attack to do it. You just need to wait till the next upkeep. Professional Face Breaker is good because it can sneak through damage by itself with the Menace and then it can put all of those treasures we're taking to good use by giving us card advantage. Prosper Tomebound is absolutely nuts in this deck with all of the cards that we're playing from Exile. Ramirez the Pietro is a pirate which synergizes very well with our deck and it also is going to steal stuff from our opponent's libraries. Roaming Throne works very well. We're going to be naming Pirate and doubling on all sorts of triggers with this, not least of which is our commander of course. Ruthless Technomancer works very well with all of those treasures that we're going to be making. It allows us to rebuy stuff from our graveyard which is great. We can also also use it to kill a creature that we've stolen but has to be returned at end of turn such as with Captivating Crew. Father Adele Acquisitor is really solid because almost every game has at least one player with an island in play and then you can just steal their soul ring first and then take it from there turn after turn stealing a good artifact from their deck. It's even better with our commander because we get two treasures every time we play one of those artifacts. The Beast Deathless Prince is one of those cards that I was thinking about building a deck around until I saw Don Andres. It's sweet that it allows us to gain control of a creature when we cast it and then deal a bunch of damage with Don Andres, but it's also really good because whenever we deal damage to an opponent with their own creature we're going to get to draw a card that's going to be happening a lot in this deck thief of sanity is a really good one to connect with and start stealing cards from our opponent's deck thieving amalgam is really powerful because we're going to be manifesting stuff at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep which is obviously good but where it gets really strong is when our opponent is forced to board wipe because we have a big board and they're just going to wipe all of these creatures that we control but don't own which means that they're going to take a bunch of damage and we're going to gain a lot life. Xorn works really well with all the treasures we're making by giving us an extra treasure every time. And Zara Renegade Recruiter is a cool card that allows us to look at our opponent's hand and steal a creature from it. It's particularly good when we have a couple of sack outlets out, but it's good nonetheless. Moving on to Sorceries, we have Ensnared by the Mara, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite cards. It's going to work so well in this deck because we're quite aggressive and this allows you to play some fun mind games. Fever Suspicion is pretty close to a new Itali trigger on a spell that happens twice. Insurrection is a good finisher that we're including to try to close off the game. And moving on to instance we have siphon insight which is yet another way to steal stuff from our opponents and we get to flash it back for another go which is very nice we're also playing you find some explorers which gives us a way to deal with artifacts but also allows us to exile cards from our opponent's library in artifacts we have chaos wand which is another version of dazzling sphinx except not on a creature wand of wonder is basically like chaos wand but ever so slightly better because we can sometimes cast more than one spell and the indomitable is very solid as a coastal piracy effect that's going to allow us to draw a bunch of cards that we actually get to play from our graveyard as long as we control three or more tap pirates, which we should in this deck. This makes it very hard to remove and a great source of card advantage. Moving on to enchantments, we have Share the Spoils. This creates kind of like a common pool of cards that people can access, which works very well with what our commander is doing. Stolen Strategy is pretty good, but quite slow. We will have to wait until the beginning of our upkeep for this to trigger, but it is going to provide some nice card selection and card advantage. And moving on to Planeswalkers, we have Tasha the Witch Queen, which is going to work so perfectly with every this deck is doing giving us a 3-3 demon for basically doing anything at all we mostly want it for the passive but both of the active abilities are kind of relevant to what the deck is doing finally we're moving on to lands we have high market and Firection tower as sack outlets that allow us to deal with creatures that we may have stolen only temporarily and we're also playing strip mine and tectonic edge because homeward path is the worst enemy of this deck and we want to be able to deal with it even though they still get to activate it once in response so there you have it that has been our Don Andres, the Renegade deck deck. What do you think about this one? It seems like a really outside the box and unique commander, which plays a lot of cards that you're not necessarily always going to see in commander games. I like that and I think it's definitely a unique twist on the Steel Things archetype and the Pirate archetype. So I'm looking forward to see what you guys think about this. You think I missed any cards or are there any things that you wouldn't have added? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel and until next time take care